I'm Danelle Jones, and I'm going to read you some poems to celebrate National Poetry Month with this House of Books. I'm going to start off with an old poem. Actually, I haven't read for a long time. Um, this is from a little collection that I did with some friends. Uh, we called ourselves the Soapweed Sister Salon, and we did this little cool chapbook. So um, this is called Night Travel. And perhaps it will be familiar to any of you who've spent some time trying to travel across Wyoming at night. Night travel. In bitter headlights, we see snow kicking up like summer's dust. Low on the right shoulder, something large, nocturnal, flares up a shock of wings, dives past the windshield, plunges into the other side of night. How swift and imposing in the face of these all too human struggles. Clark's fork, black current splits the black night, like time splits life. We stop to pee at the road's edge, small creatures against the inscrutable land. We pause, then drive furiously on. That's kind of fun. The other one, the next one I want to read is a, definitely a magical thinking poem. And this is from, in case you haven't, don't know anything about it, this is from Sandstone. This is an, is an anthology of prose and poems to support this house of books. If you don't have a copy, you want to make sure you get one. Um, and the poem I'm going to read from this one is called The Morning the Past Flowers Bloomed. Waking with magical powers, Tim strolls with his dog across Mumbai, Aleppo, and Kabul, off-capping to busy neighbors and offering Bella's amiable head to children's curious hands. Later, he'll oversee the transformation of moldy leftovers into penicillin. He will make sure that cobalt blue teapot that cobalt blue teapots adorn all gardens across all continents, reminding people that the sky has not always been blue nor love so complete. After that, he will see to it that Dr. Watson outwits Sherlock Holmes. Basking in his successes, he'll try out the curse of the Bambino, comma splices, accidents, illness, and heartache. He plans to do something about laundry and housework generally. Tomorrow, just for fun, he'll see to it that on every piece of paper, on every desk, on the entire planet, a cat stops. If only for one day, every man will lift its tender body in his hands and feel the grumble of love against his fingertips. All right, the next three poems haven't been published. Um, <clears throat> things I've been working on. Uh, the first one is called The Human Current. And I should show you that it's written all in couplets and you'll know why that's important by the end. The Human Current. I pay my spiritual guide by the hour, just like you pay your personal trainer. That's ridiculous, you tell me. We all have to swim from the crust of one sun to the splinter of the next moon. What good are words when time is forever receding? Maybe so. I know perfectly well that biking and weights won't lift us against the human current, but I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a couplet to get us into heaven. Okay, that was fun, right? Um, oh, this is kind of, a, I hope, a poignant poem. Um, if you live in Billings, you know what rim rocks are. Um, if you don't, they tend to be sort of these low um, sandstone rims, really, rock rims, they're quite beautiful. Um, so this poem is called, What Will My Daughter Be? The tree who dresses wildly all summer, then goes naked in the fall? Dream sender sage, or the river, amiable on top and treacherous below? 
Or will she be the crow with her obsidian charm or the stone in my shoe? The daffodil, hyacinth, or crocus who comes stealthily and promise so much? Or maybe she will be the rim rock, so quiet and close, I will hardly remember she's there. Fun, huh? Okay, then my last one. This is an old one, but I've never published it anywhere. And it's really one of my favorite poems. I don't know why. Well, I don't know, I just like it. Um, it's a love poem. Who's What's not to like, right? Uh, it's called House of Opposites. Finish up and come back home. Forget Babylon, it only tempts crowds. Later, when you've written all about it, smoked a lot of cigarettes, visited all your friends with their big Jupiter eyes, then return to me. Walk across the meadow, clutching your blue jacket. Bring your shoes, your wine, your briefcase full of receipts. We'll settle on the porch near the new laid eggs of wild hens and pull the dainty ferns from the hem of your blue traveling suit. suit. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad that you're listening to poems. I hope you're out there writing poems too. Reading, writing, oh yes, washing those hands like Lady Macbeth. Thank you.